Welcome back to Paul's Tech News. If you couldn't tell, I'm reporting today from my new office, which I've been moving into this week. Things are still a little bit barren here, but the functional elements are installed. Fresh paint, a desk, a computer, and that special ingredient, internet access so I can bring you guys the tech news. Next comes like furniture and stuff, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Despite my repeated requests that everyone just chill for this week so I could get set up in here, tech news did still happen, but fortunately it was all either pretty good news or at least something we can make fun of Intel about. So a pretty stark contrast to the radioactive dumpster fire that was national and global news outside of the tech space this week. So we're gonna take a break from all that and talk about nice fluffy computer stuff like AMD FSR coming to Xbox Box. Intel possibly getting some big gains from Raptor Lake, the used GPU market getting even saucier, and the introduction of a dark and mysterious new code name that sounds even more dark and mysterious if you whisper it. Raphael X. Excellent! Today's video is brought to you by Kyoxia's family of NVMe SSDs, featuring their latest Bix 3D flash memory. The BG5 now supports PCIe 4.0 and is still available in the incredibly small M.2 2230 form factor, so it's a great fit for gaming PCs, laptops, and compatible handheld gaming devices. And for enterprise or hyperscale data center use, the CD7 and XD6 feature the new EDSFF or Enterprise and Data Center Standard form factor for ease of integration, while the CD7 supports PCIe Gen 5 for maximum performance when paired with the latest AMD Epic or Intel Xeon server hardware. For more on Kyoxia SSDs, click the sponsor link in the video description. So first, let us unshroud the mystery surrounding Raphael X. Or actually, we'll let Team Group do that, whilst announcing their new industrial line of DDR5 5600 memory modules, combining the rigid pragmatism of industrial design with ooh shiny RGB lighting, they claimed that the new memory line would be a good match for next-gen platforms like Intel Raptor Lake and AMD Raphael X. AMD, of course, has yet to formally announce Raphael X processors. We did know that Zen 4 would be paired with AMD's 3D vCache technology based on slides shown at Compu but we didn't know it would carry such a mysterious and badass codename. Raphael X, like a cross between a Ninja Turtle and Wolverine, gives me the impression that it will slaughter workloads with a combination of precisely honed adamantium blades and ferocious sarcasm. And assuming these chips will excel at gaming like the first edition 5800X3D, it's also good to hear that they might be out sooner rather than later, if Twitter leaker Greymon55 is to be believed. So maybe before year's end, if AM5 launches in late September, as rumored. And just to be fair to Team Group, despite letting Raphael X slip, their industrial RGB memory does have a practical application, shining green LEDs when all is well, and red and blue LEDs if it detects a problem. So not bad, but Team Group is still redundant. On Thursday, AMD also shared that FSR 2.0 technology, the temporal scaling and sharpening feature that has been quite well received, will be coming to Xbox Series X, S, and Xbox One soon. Xbox development teams have already received the upscaler and are actively testing it, says Tom's Hardware, although the more advanced features of FSR 2.0, which includes temporal elements, could be more challenging for developers to implement depending on the game engine. No indication yet of how much of a performance uplift FSR 2.0 might bring to consoles, but it should be at least some free frames in return for a negligible impact on visual quality, and will also likely vary from title to title. It's notable that the Xbox 360 is included as well though, so even gamers who are still on last gen can hopefully eke a bit more performance out of their gaming setup. And let's be honest, there are a lot of people out there just scraping by right now, gaming on a beat up old console or hand-me-down gaming PC. If you are one of those sad but stalwart souls holding out for the perfect moment to get a deal on a current gen GPU, your time could be coming soon. As crypto markets continue to flounder and Ethereum mining profitability remains, let's say, suboptimal for GPU miners, many farmers are putting their crypto rigs out to pasture or up for sale to be more accurate, and PC Gamer claims that sellers in China are flocking to Jianyu, an eBay-like website, to sell piles of RTX 30 series graphics cards with prices that would have blown your mind just one year ago, like RTX 3080s for 523 US dollars, or 3,500 yuan, or RTX 3060 Ti's for 300 to 350 dollars, which were auctioned off via live stream. There was a lot of GPU mining in China due to low electricity costs, but after 
after government crackdowns and a big hit to profits recently, many operations are shutting down. As I pointed out last week, the overall Ethereum hash rate continues to fall in June, even though the actual price of Ethereum has bounced back somewhat. And while cards harvested from mining farms likely come in a wide range of used conditions, many were likely run underclocked or undervolted to save power, and the first point of failure is typically the fans, which can often be replaced. And we do know that there are a lot of mining GPUs out there. According to Tom's Hardware, Ethereum miners spent $15 billion on GPUs alone, not counting motherboards, memory, CPUs, and power supplies, in the past one and a half years, which they estimate to be about 10% of global supply. So that's a lot of graphics cards that could go to gamers if mining is no longer an option. Let's talk about Intel for a while next though. Their upcoming Raptor Lake CPUs also have a pretty badass code name and a lake of Raptors is definitely in my top 10 coolest ways to die, but Intel themselves have leaked a detail about their 13th gen CPUs that seems to corroborate things previously leaked. Update notes for Intel's Extreme Tuning Utility or XTU software version 7.8.0 list added future platform support for efficient TVB or efficient thermal velocity boost. Now, while efficient isn't typically the word you'd think of when considering Intel's top-end maximum clock speed flagship CPUs, ETVB would appear to be an enhanced version of thermal velocity boost that debuted with 10th gen Comet Lake CPUs. And Twitter leaker OneRai Shu already mentioned earlier this week that they think one Raptor Lake CPU will hit six gigahertz by way of efficient thermal velocity boost. So likely the 13900K or 13900KS, which will be 24 cores, 8P cores, and 16E cores for 32 threads total, just like the flagship 5950X or 7950X AMD Ryzen CPUs, sort of. But because they're Intel, they can only provide this six gigahertz feat with a new digital linear voltage regulator or DLVR, deliver, power delivery configuration, which can only be found on, you guessed it, new Intel 700 series motherboards, Z790 chipset motherboards to be specific, presumably. So sorry if any of you Alder Lake adopters were hoping to upgrade to a flagship 13th gen CPU on your pitiful Z690 motherboard and actually make Make use of all of its features. This is just a rumor though. I'm sure Intel would never do anything like that. If it's any consolation though, at least Raptor Lake is looking to be pretty fast, around 20% faster than Alder Lake if these leaked benchmarks posted by Chinese tech site EXP Review are accurate. They claim to have obtained an engineering sample Raptor Lake i9-13900, and they compared it to a current gen 12900K with matched frequencies. Even though it was in a Z690 motherboard without official support, the 13900 beat the 12900K by an average of 20% in workstation tasks, probably getting some extra boost from those extra cores. The gaming performance was a bit behind though, but again, the motherboard support wasn't there, and this appeared to be a very early engineering sample that was having a hard time achieving higher clock speeds. Speaking of gaming performance being a bit behind, Intel's Arc A380, their first desktop Arc GPU, which only launched in very limited quantities in China through system integrators, has now been independently benchmarked, and it's not pretty. While synthetic 3D Mark tests show it ahead of the Radeon RX 6400 and the NVIDIA GTX 1650, real world games are what matter, and there it was pretty much smoked at 1080p by the entry level cards from Team Red and Team green. Games shown here are League of Legends, PUBG, GTA 5, Tomb Raider, Forza Horizon 5, and Red Dead Redemption 2. And no, they weren't testing on an AMD CPU or anything like that. They used an Intel Core i5-12400 CPU, B660 motherboard, and DDR4 memory. The Arc A380 just sucks horribly, it would seem, unlike your mom who sucks quite skillfully. Aha, and with that, I see the show is beginning the degenerative process that leads us to tech briefs, which is good because you'll need to think fast to even start to comprehend the mind-bending speed that the new PCI Express 7.0 standard will bring to bear. Okay, it's not that mind-bending, it's double PCIe 6.0, predictably, but still just an uncomfortable buttload of theoretical bandwidth. 32 gigabytes per second with a single lane, which is the same as a 16-speed PCIe 3.0 connection, 
and up to 512 gigabytes per second with a full Vi16 PCIe 7.0 connection. That's like your whole boot SSD just copied in one second. Note that this is just the draft version for PCIe 7.0. It'll probably be finalized in 2025. Speaking of mind-bending amounts of data, consider Micron's new i400 series of micro SD cards, which come in capacities up to 1.5 terabytes. Yes, that is 1.5 freaking terabytes in a micro SD card. The i400 also has U3, A2, and Class 10 performance ratings, and an endurance rating that accounts for 24-7 operation over five years. The spec sheet didn't list transfer speeds, unfortunately, but the U3 rating means minimum rates speeds of 30 megabytes per second. Read speeds are much higher, the article says, but nothing more than that. Still though, I could see this card coupling with a surveillance camera or a Steam Deck in a very satisfying way. Speaking of simulated sex with the Steam Deck, that's probably one of the now over 3,000 games that are verified or playable on the popular handheld device, a big number and a notable milestone for SteamOS. Despite some imperfections with the verification system, fans say it does a good job of helping find compatible games, even though haters will point out that there are still 1,505 PC games currently listed as unplayable on Steam Deck 2. But I think that's okay, because it gives PC gaming purists something to cling to and helps maintain order and balance in the universe. And who else would swoop in to destroy that balance but Amazon, this time creeping us all the F out by piping your dead grandma's voice through your Alexa speaker. As discussed at Amazon's RE Mars conference, you only need to feed their AI about a minute or so of voice recording data to allow it to recreate Mima or Peepaw's voice so it can read the youngins a bedtime story through your Alexa speaker. And really the story here is that they can now now deep fake anyone's voice with very minimal input, and surely that could never be put to nefarious use. But really, Amazon, why do you immediately have to go to the example of Lazarusing up dead relatives like you've got some sort of god complex? Uh, uh, uh. Actually, now that I think about it, that makes a lot of sense. Anyway, Alexa, play Despacito. <laughs> But there you have it guys, tech news for the week and my first run here at the new location. I'll see if I can do some actual decorating soon, but if you like this video, click that like button or leave me a comment down below. While you're down there, all the articles I talked about today are linked in the description if you're interested. And check out my store at paulshardware.net for high quality merchandise, t-shirts, hoodies, beer sets, and more. Subscribing to my channel is always a good call too. Thanks again everyone, and we'll see you next week.